welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining tonight's uh, masterclass, where we're going to look at how to reduce the screen time battles with our kids. So I'm sure you're joining, if you're listening to it after, you're listening to it because you're all too familiar with screen time and kids. Maybe, you know, you've had enough of your kids trying to get your kids' attention and all they are interested is in the screen time. Or maybe you're just frustrated with how much of a battle takes place between how much screen times your kids are having. Or maybe your kid is telling you that everyone else has a certain technology that you don't want them to have, whether it's their own iPad, whether it's their own phone, whether it's social media, and you feel like it's not quite ready to it. There are so many different types of places that we can sort of like lock lock horns with our kids over screen time. So what I want to do is talk tonight about the screen time. Um, I want to talk a little bit more. I want to give you a few strategies that you can that can help you with it. I can and then I'm going to talk about how we can start it, start to reduce it right now, right for in time for Hanukkah. So basically let me tell you what what's what this class is going to be and what this class is not going to be about. So this class is going to be very, very empowering. It's not about me telling you what screen time boundaries you should place in your home, right? I believe that you, if you're watching this, you're the type of parent that is thoughtful, that is intentional, that knows what they want to do. And you, you have those values. Whatever your family's values are, those are your values. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to empower you with a few kinds of tools that you can use to, to sort of strengthen you and give you the confidence that you need to put their boundaries down for your family's screen time consumption. And then we're gonna talk about eight practical strategies that are actually gonna be super fun that you can implement over Hanukkah that is going to help make these changes in your family right now. Okay, so let's start. So strategy number one is, I think it's really, really important as a parent that you are educated, informed, okay? Um, basically, it doesn't have to take a long time. I know if most parents are stretched, busy, but everyone has a few minutes, right? Where you can sort of like Google, screen time, kids, look up for yourself, what are the, what are the risks to too much screen time. What is too much screen time? Like you should have for yourself that information that you need to have, right? And you can look up like, there's so much data on it. There is so much data on how kids that have too much screen time, that have more screen time, um, they, they, they suffer more from emotional, social attention problems. There's a link between increased con, um, screen time consumption and increase in obesity. Um, and that could be linked to the amount of, of you know, junk food ads that they see on, on while they're watching, right? Because we think, you know, whatever, it's just screen time, but we have to understand that it's not just screen time, right? We have to understand that there is a multi-billion dollar industry behind it that has put like tons of research and, and data on how to best sell to people, including ourselves, right? So when we're pitting ourselves or our kids against this, we have to know what it is that we are pitting ourselves about. Look at how, you know, there's links between increased um, screen time and irregular sleep. Right. And we know what the, the you know, we, we if you've had ever had an overtired kid, you know what it does to them. Right. Overtired kids are not always the most fun to be around. Right. So so do all this this research, do all the research into also how screen time, video games, or what the kids are watching or on social media, etc., how it can desensitize them to violence. Now, you might be thinking, he said, what does that mean? But it actually has very, very powerful implications for our kids because a kid that is desensitized to, to, to violence is the type of kid that is going to, let's say, if they were to go into school and get pushed over by another kid, because they are more desensitized to it, perhaps they're not going to stand up for themselves. Perhaps they're not going to say, hold on a second, that wasn't right. 
right? And come home and tell you, perhaps these are the types of kids that grow into adults that let other people push us around a little bit because they've lost that sensitivity to violence. And as, as parents, what we try to do is try and encourage our kids sensitivity to to their self-respect to how other people are treating them and we wouldn't want to do anything that sort of un undermines them look at the links between you know screen time and active play and creative play for kids and 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 then obviously as our kids get older we're not just talking about screen time but we're talking about social media and the whole world and smartphones and the whole world of there. like do look into it do the research and i'll tell you why this is super important and there's there's two reasons why why this why this is super important. Number one is is because when you know what it is that you're up against, you're able to make more confident decisions, right? For example, if you look into the research and you see, hold on a second, you know, I see that there is clear links. I've done the research. I've ascertained that there are clear links between you know um um kids that the screen time and um in desensitization to violence right or less creative play academic problems attention problems or if you could kind of say you know see there's fascinating that, and the research out there that is that's out there is fascinating i believe there's there's a piece of research that set, that shows that kids um that are on social media for as little as seven minutes seven minutes that's it seven minutes it has a negative impact on their emotional well-being, right? We tend to think that you've got to be on social media for like a few weeks, a few months, scrolling on it for hours and hours before it starts to affect you. A kid can go on it for seven minutes. And, and and it already has a negative impact on their on their on their emotional well-being right when so when we have that kind of information it helps us decide what we want to do in our family right it helps us decide actually you know what I've done the research this is the value that I want for my kids this is what I want for my kids and then because you have that um, information, right and you have that confidence that comes with making an informed decision you parent from a different place right and i'll share with you a cute story that i think really really um, um illustrates this point so there was there's a story you might have never heard it before but there's a story of a, um, a woman who's shopping in a new york kosher supermarket and a big supermarket and she sees another woman with a with a toddler and the woman doesn't look jewish at all and the toddler picks up a candy bar from the side and she says, can I have it? And we can all imagine, if you've ever been shopping with a toddler, you can all imagine, you know, the scene, you're trying to shop, the toddler's got the candy bar, you've kind of got the choice in your head, you kind of think, oh, do I say no and risk a full-fledged tantrum and toddlers in shopping it could be pretty dangerous or do I stick to my values? boundaries and say no this mom did a different thing she turned to the little kid and she said to her it's not kosher so the other mom mother that was walking past the jewish mom she stopped and she was surprised she went over to her, she goes i hope you don't mind me asking but are you jewish and the mom says no i'm not jewish oh do you keep kosher she says no i don't keep kosher so she says i hope you don't mind me asking, but i just heard you tell your child that not to have it because it's not kosher and she says, yeah, I said that because I see all the Jewish mums doing it and it works. So I do it too. And it's fascinating, right? Because it's a cute story. Um, but it, it, if you think about it, it's true, right? And as a mum who keeps kosher, I can tell you that when, you when I tell my kids, no, it's not kosher, there's no pushing boundaries. But if I tell my kids, no, I don't want you to eat it. It's not so healthy or whatnot. There's pushing boundaries. And part of it is the consistency, but part of it also is the confidence that it comes with it. When I say no to my child, when, when, when a, someone who keeps kosher says no to their child um, because it's not kosher, they are 100% confident that I, this, this is a no, right? This is a no. And I feel bad for you. I will empathize with you. I will, you know, I will be there with you as you weather this emotional storm of getting a no. 
but I'm not going to change my mind. And it comes from that confidence. So that confidence is so, so empowering. So take the time, a few minutes here, a few minutes there, Google it. You can read up about it. it depends on how, in, on how much you need, information you need. But do the research for yourself so you can get yourself to a place where, number one, you're confident in making those decisions for where you want your screen time boundaries to be in your home. And your confidence will help you enforce those boundaries in a loving way. There's a second very, very important reason why it's really, really important to do our, our, our research. And this is because we never parent in a vacuum, right? We never set the boundaries and keep the boundaries in a vacuum. If we were raising our kids um, in a vacuum, right, we could kind of say, and they weren't really inter interacting with our money, other families or other kids, we could kind of say, you know what? no screen time or one hour of screen time or a week or whatever and that was the boundary but it is and what happens as our kids get older and they meet with other kids and they go to school is you may hear this phrase it might be slightly um, familiar to you and that phrase goes something to the tune of but everyone else is right will you tell your kids I'm sorry I don't want you to have your own phone yet and your kid comes home and says, but everyone else has their own phone. And if I don't have a phone, no one's going to contact me. Nobody is going to invite me to think. And I'm going to be a social outcast. And pretty much my life is going to be over. Right. Um, um, and you know what? Your child may very well have a point. And now you as the parent have a question to ask, right? Because the question is no longer, do I give my phone or do I, my child a phone or not? Do I weigh up what are the disadvantages of the, a child having their own phone, right? Because I've looked into it and I've done the research and I've, I've seen the links between different things. And if you, if you can't find the research, you're more than welcome to reach out to me, to reach out to someone else you know that's in this field. And we're happy to point you in the right direction so that you can make, come to these decisions from a place of knowledge. But you suddenly have a question of, um, hold on, you suddenly have a question of, do I, do I give my child the phone with all the disadvantages that, that comes with, or do I, do I tell my child, actually, um, I know that you're going to, you're going to have, um, I know that there are going to be disadvantages to you not having a phone. Hello, hello. Welcome to everyone that's joined. Um, so I know that there are disadvantages to, to not having a, a phone, but the, the, right, so you have a different question now. Your question isn't anymore. Do I, do I give my child the phone? But I know that all the negatives that will come out from it because I've done the research and I found I found out what the links are and I want to protect my child from all that. But it's now I'm weighing up the two sides. It's interesting. I heard from a um, a leading mental health professional who is. Um, he, he's in private practice and he's, he was talking about social media and smartphones and children. And he has a very young daughter, he has a, a one-year-old. And he said, I'm not gonna give my, one, my daughter a phone, a smartphone until she's 18. So of course he got tremendous back, back, uh, pushback from that because if you've ever navigated that, you're very likely to hear, but hold on a second. If you don't give, if you as the parents don't give me the, the smartphone before I'm 18, then I'm not going to have a way to contact my phone friends. And you know what he said, which I thought was fascinating. He said, it's true. It is true. If we choose not to give our kid a, phone, a smartphone when everyone else is having it, let's just say everyone else is having the smartphone. There is a cost to that. There is a cost to that. But what's interesting is he said, I work in private practice and I see the damage that the smartphones and the social media does to our young people. And I think that the social, the social impact of not having a phone is the lesser of the, is the, the least risky of the two options. Okay, 
which is, is, is a fascinating idea. But the, the idea really what here, what is going on is that we're asking the question from an informed place at the point of view. It's not a question of, of, of now, no, that's my rule. That's my rule. It's a question of, I heard you and you can have this dialogue with our children, especially as they get older, we can have the dialogue on a deeper level, the conversation and say, I hear you. I know what you're talking about and I see what's, what is doing. And I need to, I, as your parent, who's responsible for your health and your well-being, I'm going to weigh it up. And perhaps if it's a question that you can't answer on your own, go to someone in the field, go to a parenting expert, go to a mental health professional and, and discuss it with them and ask them, which option to, should I take from to my child? And then again, it gives us it gives you the, as parents the confidence to make the decision and it gives you the confidence to also trans give your child your answer and your value in a loving empathetic way so that that's that's step number one step number one is do do your research right do your research so you can come to a place where you are confidently able to put in the values around screen time for your family. The second point that I wanted to really um, um, look at, which is, which is uh, again, it's, it's a huge mind, um, um, mindset piece to it. And that is, what's your goal, right? If I were to ask parents, what is your goal with um, um, screen time? Parents would answer different things, right? There are some parents that are gonna tell me, you know what? My goal is just to get my kid off the screen. Right. Or my goal is to get through the day with minimal fighting or to get my kid to do their homework before they get on their screens. Right. Or whatever it is. But there's also a deeper, a deeper goal. Right. So there's, there's there's kind of like two goals. There's the survive goal, which is that goal of in the moment. Right. I want to reduce the, battle, the, the screen time battles. I want to get my kids playing outside more so they can run around. They can they can make friends. They can play with friends. They can be a kid again right um, and those are the just kind of the survive ones but there's also another goal that we have in parenting and we have it when it comes to screen time and technology too and that is the thrive goal what do I mean by this is that let's face it technology is here most adults that I know if we're honest with ourselves struggle with screen time right we struggle with technology we're on our phones too much we let social media you know we, we, we social media is very very powerful and we can get influenced by it and it can Im impact our emotional well-being or our uh, uh, things right we all struggle with it we all we for anyone who's who's like ever said I'm going to spend 20 minutes watching Netflix and then two hours later they're still watching I'm going to watch I'm going to spend 20 minutes on, on Instagram and then Two hours later, they're still, oh my goodness, what's happened to all the time? We all struggle with it, right? And we and we also struggle with with safety, right? With knowing how to navigate it safely. So it's it's safe for us um, on, on a very basic level. Physically, we don't get scammed. On, on on an emotional level, we don't get negatively impacted. And on a spiritual level, that it doesn't, it doesn't take us away from where we want to be. It doesn't take us away from our higher values. And the thrive goal when it comes to screen time is really to give our kids the tools so that they can navigate technology in a healthy way as adults, right? And you can kind of think of these two goals as, as like two separate goals. But what I want to try and teach you to dip tonight, and this is, this is very powerful, very important, is that the goals are one, right? It's, it's oftentimes, you know, we kind of think about like, you know, do, do I spend quality time with my kids or quantity time with the kids? That's not the type of question it is. I'm going to show you how the moments where we have that friction, we're going to, you're going to shift your mindset. And instead of these, these, these are, are no longer just going to be moments of friction, but they are going to be learning opportunities, teaching opportunities to our children. I'll give you an example, right? We all know the struggle of going on screen time and it's addictive, right? You plan to go on it for 15 minutes and a half an hour, 45 minutes, an hour later, you're still sucked into it and you're, and all that time is gone. And the same thing happens to our kids, right? You tell your child you're going to have 15 minutes on and then, you know, later on, they, they will struggle to come off it. So let's say you want to teach yourself, your child, you want to make it a little bit easier for, for yourself in the moment. So you tell your child, look, I'm very happy to let you have the screen, screen time. You're going to have screen time for, let's say, 15 minutes, a half an hour, whatever you choose. 
But before we start, I'm going to put a timer on. And then when that timer goes, that's how you'll know that it's time to put it away, that it's time to come away from it. And you talk to your child about it and your child listens and they agree to it. So you put the timer on and you, 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 you go through the thing. And then when the timer beeps, hopefully it's a little bit easier. And obviously the more you do this, the more your child will get into the habit of, yep, yeah, time is gone, I'm, I, I put it away. But what you're also teaching, so you've made the survive a little bit easier, right? Because you've made, you put a strategy in place for your child, um, that makes it easier for them to know I've got this set amount of time when the time of beach I come off it but you're also teaching them you're also going to give them tools to thrive with technology how because you're going to talk to them about it you're going to tell your child listen I get it right technology is addictive and you can talk to your child about how the fact you know we hold a smartphone in our hand and what is a smartphone yes it's a brilliant piece of technology but it's also a piece of equipment with billions and billions of dollars of research that's been put into it on how to make you want to spend more time on it, right? That is what it is. So you're, you're going to tell your child that, look, this is a very powerful piece of, of, of equipment. This is a very powerful thing. And it's very, very common to spend more time on it than we want to, right? I get it. You're telling your child, I get what you're going through, I get how hard it is. In order to, to make it easier for ourselves, you could tell them we're going to put a boundary in place beforehand, right? And now this becomes not just a survive, goal, a, a survive tool, but also a thrive tool. And you repeat it enough to your child, and it becomes a tool that they can put away in their toolbox for the rest of their life, where they know technology, screen time, phones, social media is addictive right it can take we can spend more time on it than we want to and in order to navigate that I have to put a boundary into place before I start that will make it easier for me to 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 jump off it so that's to, to switch off when, when I need to so that that is really um um um, an example and it could be done in many many ways again I'm very very happy if anyone wants to 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 go go to to brainstorm with you other ways but it's it's that mindset of like I've done the research I know where I stand on it I'm confident I'm confident how to navigate things to come up that we could discuss it together I can reach out to help I can weigh up both sides of the issues and come to a confident agreement and now I'm going to take the day by day as learning opportunities to make us survive, right? To survive as, as parents and children in the same home. And at the same time, to teach my children the tools that they need in order to thrive um, with technology for the, for the rest, for the rest of, of, of their lives, right? Um, and, and I want to say, you know, you, you, you listen to a class like this, or you hear something and you're like, great. It's not a one-time thing, right? This is it. We're in it for the long haul. Just like, I, as I said a, bit, a few minutes ago, that technology is here to stay. It's a conversation. It's a piece that we have to keep having with our kids. And in order to do that, we have to be comfortable discussing uncomfortable things with our kids. We have to be comfortable with them being able to say to us, but why? Why don't you want me to be? And be able to go through it, especially the, the older they get, the more information we could get this. But this should be a conversation that you keep on having, right? And you keep on having with it. And you also have to make the space for, especially as our children get older, where they can come and tell us about the mistakes that they've made, right? Because they very, especially as they get older, they very well may make mistakes, right? So we have to have that space to make, to, 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 to have those conversations with our children again and again and again as they get older. What I wanted to do is I wanted to also give you some strategies as how to implement it, right? So You've done a little bit of the research. You have a pretty confident thing about how you're going to. These are my, my uh, these are our family screen time about boundaries, and you know you're you're looking at, at teachable moments. How do we make it better, right? So I'm going to give obviously 
we can't just say no screen time. We have to replace it. And a lot of times we think to ourselves, oh my goodness, it's going to be so hard, right? And, and think about it, right? You come home at the end of a long day, your kids come home from school, everyone's tired, everyone's thing, and you're like exhausted. And everyone, all you want to do is stick the kids in front of the screen. All they want to do is chill out in front of the screen. And who wants to fight that? But the reality is that that and we think it's going to be a hard thing but there's things that we can do to make it easier for ourselves and also to give us those moments that really are the best part of parenting right you know those moments you have when you spend time with your kids together and you're like oh my gosh like like I remember now why I love them I remember why why I wanted to have kids right and we don't treat ourselves enough I think most of us don't treat ourselves enough to those moments. So what I wanna give you is I wanna give you eight different fun, easy to implement Hanukkah ideas that you can do over Hanukkah, prepare them ahead of time, speak to your kids about it. I'll also send it out as a PDF if anyone wants it as well. Um, speak to your kids about it so that you can plan and you can keep excited. These are a lot of these we've done in our family that, that you know, that, that they are, um, yearly annual favorites that my kids are my kids are already talking to me about it okay so I'll tell I'll tell you what um what what they are and what we try to do is we try to do one for each night of Hanukkah that's why I, um I've got um eight so the first one is called um a gelt ladle right so some families have the tradition of giving Hanukkah gelt um and it actually where, where it comes from is that because the the Mac um not the Maccabees the Greeks didn't allow the Jews to study Torah so as an incentive to encourage the children to to study Torah, they gave them um, um, money to, as, as a reward kind of thing. So what we do in, in, in our families, we, we, we break up a note, you have to go to the bank or, or do it that way, into pennies, right? And every kid can go and dip their hand into this bowl full of pennies and get the Hanukkah gelt. Now, it, 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 it's, it might not end up being a, a ton of money, but it's a delicious experience, a delicious experience of abundance where a kid walks into this you know, a bowl full of pennies and they get to pick out, a, 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 you know, a ladle, you can use a ladle, you can just cut whatever you want and they get to keep whatever it is. It's really, it's, it's cheap, it's easy to do, but it's super fun and, and, and it just feels like a delicious, abundant experience um, um, for kids and, and it could be something small that, that they, they are so happy with. Another thing that we, another, the second night, what we do is, and, and we do this in any order, is we do donut decorating. So you can, you can, what you could do is you can either buy plain donuts, you can make donuts, and then we have a whole bunch of different fillings. We do like Nutella, and we do like caramel, and I'll do icing, and we'll just do different things. And 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 we have the syringes as well, and the kids get to choose their syringe. You have sprinkles, of course, you have to have sprinkles. There's no Hanukkah without donuts without sprinkles, at least once, right? And they just get to decorate their own donuts. It's very um, chilled, easy, fun um, way to bond together and to sort of take their minds off off um, um, the screens. And it's it's a way that you're building a habit of doing stuff together that 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 doesn't involve um, screen time. So the third one is, and this is this is I think this one I, I possibly this one or, or the eighth one is our family's fa um, favorite is mystery back. We do a mystery Maccabee. So what we do is is a few days before Hanukkah. We we put every kid's name and, and parents' name into um, a bowl and everyone picks someone else's name. And then we go to a shop and everyone gets a budget of somewhere between two and five pounds, um, which we, we pay for. And they get they have to choose a present for the person that they pick. But the person that they pick isn't allowed to know who got them. So obviously they spend a few days trying to figure out who got who. And then when it comes to it, um, they have to they have to they, everyone gets to pick their gift and they have to sort of guess who it was that gave it to them so it's a very very cute again easy inexpensive um, um, thing exciting it gets them to think about each other and think about what they would like so it's, it's a really fun thing to do another activity that we do is we make chocolate lollipops super easy to do melt some chocolate get some baking paper draw some circles and lollipop sticks you put the chocolate on top you can again put sprinkles or anything on top of it put a lollipop stick in it you stick it in the fridge or the freezer for half an hour an hour and boom you have chocolate lollipops it's this fun easy delicious um, activity that you can do this is also one of our family actually we have three family favorites so <laughs> this one is also it's a dreidel surprise game so basically what we do is we'll put on the table um 
I'll buy some prizes and then I'll also I'll put on the table upside down cups and bowls and whatever. And some of the upside down cups and bowls will be um, prizes and some of them will be just like random items. So it could be it could be, let's say, a, a raw potato. It could be a sponge. It could be a glove or sock, whatever, whatnot. And um, each as as they spin the dreidel, uh, they, they get to choose one of these upturned things. And obviously they don't know they could get a prize or they could get some random things. Obviously, if your kids are little, I would make sure that you, you, you first you, you make sure that you have enough prizes that every kid can at least get one normal decent prize and tell your children ahead of time that don't worry what you get even if you get not even if you just get all those funny weird things you'll still get a chance to choose a prize so you don't have tears um, at the end of it um obviously talking about dreidel another fun activity you could do is just play dreidel right you know play it with with chocolate girl play it with regular money it's a fun game and it's you know it, it's it's just again easy fun right the third the the seventh one is is to make edible manuras out of so for the base you use um, wafers and, and I'll, I've got a picture of this in the pdf that I'll send out afterwards with toothpicks and cheerios um for the for the branches of the manure and then you know the yellow candy corn um um candy corn so we, we use those as, as as frames again it's a, it's a nice easy um fun activity that the kids can do and it's something fun to do and the third thing that we do is and usually we say this in the last night of Hanukkah is we do a lucky dip a lucky dip with a twist so what is it is that every everybody in the family writes down two things that they would want so for example it could be um no no jobs at home for a week or a special you know coffee with a coffee or a cho hot chocolate with to go out with a hot chocolate with with a, with mom or dad for a bit or, or whatever like any any kind of thing that they kind of want to do um a pajama day whatever like like kind of experience things not toys and not things but kind of like experiences that they want and then they put it in these two things everyone puts it in and then everyone kind of pulls out two so everyone kind of gets two things that they can they, they get to redeem at any point during the year so it could be um you know later on in the year they get to sleep in um um, um for, for for a bit or have a pajama day or wh whatever it is whatever experiences that they choose and then they get to redeem it at some point later in the year and again the point of this is is firstly I'll tell you what the point of it is. The point of it is not that every time we want to get our kids off the screens, we have to be elaborate and whatever. But the reality is that firstly, Hanukkah is coming up. It's a fantastic opportunity to, as a family, spend time together and as a family do fun stuff together that doesn't involve screens, right? And it's also, I think, a little bit, you know, we, we tend to think of like the screen is the easy way out and it is in the moment. But even as parents, it costs us because these moments where we have together with our kids are precious. They really, really are precious. You know, you firstly, our kids, it's, it's interesting. I was doing an Instagram live this morning and one of the, the women that I was doing it with was talking about how she remembers um, um, Hanukkah. And she was saying all she remembers from Hanukkah is that the time that the family spent together after they lit candles as a family, right? And as a parent, you know, it's not just our kids, as a parent, we deserve that time with our kids because we spend so much time stressing about them, trying to get them to school, trying to pick them up from school, trying to get them to do their homework, to, to, to brush their teeth, to do this and worrying about, are they making it or are they not? We don't spend enough time together just being a family and we owe it to ourselves so Hanukkah is a nice time where you can have these different ideas it doesn't take a lot of work but it also means that we can hopefully get into the habit as as we go on as a family to sort of say you know what we are going to spend less screen time we're going to read together we're going to play a game together you know once a, once a week is whatever we'll do something fun together because at the end of the day if we're if we're making a transition from something that's been a big part in our life or even if it's if it's if we're trying to make it smaller, we have to do it in a way that that's rewarding, right? Because that's what the habits are that stick, the habits that are rewarding. So find your own way as a family. Like you'll find what works. For some families, it's 
everyone sits and reads together or is, is for some families it's playing a board game for some families it's going for a walk for some families it's just having a nicer supper and talking you'll find your own way that's nice and easy and enjoyable to spend time together but we can't we, we have to make it rewarding for ourselves and for our kids because that's really how this new habit of spending less time and of taking those moments the screen time moments and realizing that those are teaching opportunities where I'm going to teach my child not only how that I want you off the screen right now but I'm going to teach them the tools that that you need for for um for for life in order to, to navigate technology. Now, I know that um, um, I know that technology is a huge, huge, huge topic, and I'm sure that I have not done. I know that there's so much more we, I could talk about. This I've just given you a couple of tiny little pointers to start off. Um, I want to say that I am going to open up to questions in a moment, but I know there are a lot of people that have requested the, the recording, the replay. If you want to send me in a question afterwards, you can send me in a question. I'm also going to put my link. Um, um, to if you if you'd like to even book a, um, a, a call to discuss things with uh, what's going on for you um, or even if you have a question you can email me or you can you can book a call and I'll be happy to answer any questions that anyone has so thank you very much for joining and thank you for listening